Welcome to the Breastfeeding Talk podcast. I have an incredible working mom of two with us today, Lisa Myers. Tell us a little bit about you because you have two children and things, you know, it wasn't like you were just like, oh, breastfeeding is amazing. It's easy. And I'm like this, you know, just, I love breastfeeding every moment. Like tell us about (laughs) what happens with your kids and your experience becoming a mom. I was very excited to be a mom. My pregnancy went really, really well overall. I was healthy and active right up to the end. And I thought it was this whole really great, joyful, blissful, enlightened experience. And that the midwives would tell me everything that I needed to know because they were these wise women. And um, that was partly the case and partly not. So I was in labor for 52 hours and then had an emergency C-section. And um, as you and I were able to briefly talk about before, it was a, what's called a baby friendly hospital. And that term bothers me because the implication is that if you aren't following these protocols and trying to achieve these numbers for breastfeeding, you're somehow unfriendly toward babies or mothers, but a baby-friendly hospital, from what I understand, and I'm sure you can explain more, the emphasis is on breastfeeding, that everyone is kind of geared toward, educated for, supporting, and in my feeling at the time, slash forcing a mother to breastfeed. And so while breastfeeding was a goal of mine, I hadn't given it much thought during that labor. I was just trying to survive and come out the other side come to in my hospital room with my beautiful, healthy daughter beside me and look up and there's the little dry erase board in front of me. It will actually quite big and written in huge capital letters underlined for my goal for the day was exclusively breastfeed. And I kind of, it was just jarring because at the time my goal was to meet my daughter and live through that day, both get us both to the other side of it and um, breastfeeding. Sure. But I just hadn't really thought like, that's my goal. And no one had consulted me. And two days into our hospital stay, Tegan is my daughter is screaming in the room, just screaming and she won't stop crying and being a new mom and not knowing what to do or what's going on. I said to my husband, she's hungry. Like, I don't have any milk. I don't know. I don't know why I don't have any, but she's hungry and I can't feed her and we have to help her. Like, I cannot listen to her cry like this. This is not right. And so you need to get someone. And so he brought one of the nurses um, that was on duty in the middle of the night in, and she slipped me some Similac formula, like she was slipping me crack. She said, I'm not supposed to be giving this to you. You know, basically like if anyone asks, you aren't formula feeding your baby and you didn't get it from me. And it, it, it was so great to have her help. But what I think I needed at the time was information. And it did bring this like element of shame into the way I was feeding my daughter that I think probably a lot of moms have experienced. And From that point on, I was always supplementing breastfeeding with formula. And my son, I have my son, um, we're in the hospital. Um, It's a great, a different experience. It was a a scheduled C-section. So I felt a lot more in control, of course. But um, he was diagnosed with a lip tie and a tongue tie. But the lactation consultant at the hospital said, but it looks like he's latching fine. So you don't have to worry about it. Maybe see what your pediatrician thinks down the road. So I, I speak with my pediatrician. She says, ah, I see what she's saying. It's kind of trendy, this whole lip tie, tongue tie thing. Uh, he's gaining weight just fine. Um, you know, are you in a lot of pain? Like I was just a, we're going to do this. You put your head down maybe you suffer, but that if it was easy, everyone would do it. You know, that's just kind of the thinking. And so, um, I thought, okay, well, this is the way it's supposed to be. And this lactation consultant, Katie Dunning, who's just the greatest woman. She came, she came and she's watching me feed Colin. And she said that toe curling pain that I see you're in. She's like, is that every time does that go away at any point? I'm like, nope. 
nope, really doesn't. It's there the whole time. And she's like, all right, we're going to figure this out. Maybe she has a similar background to me. I came from being a La Leche League leader. And, you know, I don't know if it was just ingrained in my head there, um, that approach of like every single drop of breast milk you can give your child is the biggest gift. Um, It's not just food. It is this living substance that is so life-giving and really any amount is, is magical. And there are moms out there who you know, have used breast milk for things other than breastfeeding that will tell you that's very much the case, right? So you said with your son, Colin, you got his ties treated. Um, What kind of a difference did you see that making? Because you said you were able to breastfeed him until he was two. They immediately want the baby to latch because of course, breast milk as, uh, you know, antibacterial, antimicrobial, all of the healing properties of it, they want that for them to help with the pain. I put him to my breast to nurse and the little guy, you know, goes to latch like he always does. And he was able to like fully open his mouth and properly latch. And he's only, you know, a month. They're like little puppies, right? They're, they barely have any response and they're kind of just like looking around without a lot of purpose. Sometimes it seems his, he latched and his eyes just got so wide and he looked up at me and milk is spilling out of the sides of his mouth. And he was just like, what is this? Like, what is this I'm now able to do? It was just so much more effortless for both Colin and myself. And then since then, um, taking him to see the dentist and then me going to see my dentist, I've heard from my adult dentist wow, that's the best thing you could have done for him. I see so many patients that have tongue ties, never had them revised. He said it, you know, impacts the shape of your palate. It impacts the way your teeth form. It, it, you can have all kinds of lasting conditions, you know, certainly not life-threatening or hugely impactful for some people, but he said, that's really the best thing you could have done for him. I'm so glad you got that advice and I'm glad it worked out. But yeah, so that was my, that was my happy story about what a good decision that was. I'm so glad I did that. So you had two totally different experiences with each of your children. Um, you nursed your son till he was two, but you're also a working mom. So I'd love to hear about that. How did you manage continuing that breastfeeding relationship while also maintaining your career? I went back to work fully intending to pump and feed Colin to the best of my ability, but I didn't put a lot of pressure on myself that if I had to supplement with formula, that that was going to be the end of the world. Even if he just gets an ounce a day, giving myself permission to just do that much and then do what little bit more I could gave me, empowered me to do it all. It was just so nice to have that perspective. I think if I would have thought to myself on that first day, especially being in that much pain, you're going to do this for 24 months and you're going to do it at work and you have to have a stash and it has to be perfect. And if you slip up and you need formula, you've totally failed. I think if I had gone in with that perspective, I would have never made it that far. I mean, did you find, because you, you said, you know, when you were early on in this pumping journey and working, you're trying to rush home or, you know, whatever, were you ending up throwing out some breast milk because you thought it's not good anymore? Yeah. I probably threw away, I would say I easily threw away gallons of breast milk because it, it was hundreds of ounces for sure, because I would take work trips And if that chemical freeze pack isn't perfectly frozen, TSA makes you throw it away because it's potentially a bomb, right? They can't test the insides. So they they want it frozen or at least still ice crystals. Um, And then, yeah, the combining warm to chilled. I know lots of moms that throw away ounces because they're like, well, it's not really, by the time I do, I wash all of the bottles and I get it to a fridge and I chill it and then I combine it. Uh, it's, it's not really worth it. And then they throw it away. Some of these rules are just so arbitrary and they just felt safe to some person that they didn't apply to decades ago. Like 
some possibly older white man that was trying to err on the side of caution. And he knew how you should treat a raw chicken breast. And so he just applied that logic to breast milk and there is, they could not be more different. Yeah. So I, I know hundreds of ounces are being thrown out every day because I have participated in that. And I've spoken to the moms that have as well. And it's, it's a shame. I actually would love for you to explain a little bit more what the series chill is because I didn't know about it till somehow you popped up on Instagram and I was like, what is this? You finally made something that's just so much easier and it helps so many people that are caring for babies, not just the moms, because I think we end up like feeling stuck at home, right? Exclusively pumping moms who are like, every time I leave the house, I have to bring the breast milk and all the stuff. And it's just too much. You know, I have to, I have to pack the cooler. I have to whatever. And they just feel trapped at home for like the first year of their baby's lives. So you're giving them not just the breast milk, but sounds like freedom too. Yeah. Yeah. Our, it's so great that you say that because our slogan, like very early on. So I came up with this idea um, and filed the provisional patent by myself th- three months when Colin was three months old, my first day back to work. People are like, when did you have the idea? I'm like, I can tell you the exact day. I can almost point to the email where I was at in the day where I was like, this is not going to work. Um, but <laughs> our slogan is free the mom, save the milk. That's like the whole idea is that we are empowering women to lead incredible lives while achieving their parenting and breastfeeding goals. That is, that is my mission. That is what I want to do, no matter how that shows up. Um, I really love the research that's happening and I want to support that in any way I can. I, it's definitely about allowing women to get back out there in the world or back to their lives and still meet their, their goals as parents. Cause sometimes it seems like those things are mutually exclusive and you have to choose. And I think sometimes, many of the times, the best solutions for breastfeeding things come from someone's struggle with it. Just to kind of maybe follow up on this note, you nursed your son till he was two. Um, Was that something that like once you maybe got the ties treated or because of your experience with your first, did you have that goal of nursing two years? I know you kind of said if it was on day one, you thought I'd be doing this for the next 24 months. No, but like, did you just kind of see how it went day by day? Or did you say, I want to go as long as I can? What was that like? I think like for, I think it's pretty common with a lot of moms. I think that 24 months probably seems daunting. I mean, cause especially when you have a teeny tiny baby and you just get out of the hospital or you just have the home birth and you clean everything up that, um, that just seems so far out there. Um, I think the saying that rings so true for so many of us is the days are long, but the years are short. And so I am pretty sure I, I know 24 months was not my goal. I think we actually went to 25 too, because at that point you're just going so long. So I just took it day by day. I think that's the best way to say it is day by day. And then we just got there and, um, it it felt, it felt really good. I felt like I had that it was the right time. It just, it, you just live it until the journey kind of seems to naturally come to an end, or at least it worked out that way for us. I still have a lot of guilt around not breastfeeding my daughter and a lot of kind of, um, I don't know if sorrow is too strong of a word, but yeah, it's just too bad. It's, um, it's something that I really have to work on letting go of because it, I did the best I could for her and she's a very healthy little girl and, um, we're very lucky. So holding on to that is not very productive, but I think it's something that a lot of moms struggle with just because you had a successful breastfeeding journey with a subsequent child. It doesn't mean that that took away any guilt that you felt about the way the first one ended up. Um, I think sometimes moms go into, you know, maybe a next pregnancy kind of thinking, okay, well this time I'm going to get it right. And that's going to fix everything. Sometimes that happens, but it doesn't always happen. And that's okay too. I try to tell people breastfeeding is just like the rest of life. Most days are not going to be really amazing days. Um, if they are, that's awesome. I'm really happy for you, but I would not set yourself up with that expectation. No. You, you may very well be disappointed. So, well, thank you, Lisa. You're incredible. Terrific. Thank you so much, Jacqueline.